Okay, so we're handing over now to the Dudden Historical Society or, or Dudden History Society and to, to Steve, who's going to tell us a bit about the society or the group, as I can now see, and uh, how they became involved with the exhibition. Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Coe from Millen, a member of the Dudden Valley Local History Group. We were involved in an earlier project with Jeff um, based on the River Dudden, escorting an artist who included in recording the sounds of the river through a hydrophone. The range of ideas that artists have is quite astounding. So we accepted an invitation to join the Dudden Sonnets project that was never our intention to have anything to do with the show at the museum. Our plan was to bring people to the river itself to see what Willie Wordsworth had seen in his journey from the source to the sea. The Victorians had this weird idea that there was just too much beauty to behold. To avoid being overwhelmed, you needed a designated viewing station to focus one's view of the landscape. The first sculpture in Grisdale Forest was Ting, a giant 40 foot steel hoop that was designed to help give the same sort of focus. So we set about designing our own viewing stations to create a self-guided trail. Each viewing station needed a suitable parking on the road from Rhinos Pass down to Ascom in Furness and a safe passage down to the river. We planned on using signs at the roadside to identify starting points, which directed you to the riverbank itself where a second sign would introduce the sonnet or an extract from a sonnet. On their return to the road, each marker would direct viewers to the next point upstream and the next point downstream, so the trail could be followed in either direction. With some difficulty, we managed to get permission for erecting temporary signage from the National Park, the National Trust, Forest England and local landowners. You can't imagine how difficult it is to pin somebody down to say it's okay to stick a signpost by the side of the road. We were going to reuse our signposts from our completed archaeological dig. Um, they were all cleaned up, ready to be used again, and all the posters exist on my computer, never printed because of the start of the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Once things looked as if they might be possible, if only a year late, to celebrate 201 years of the sonnets, we decided to think again, but make an indoor trail that would save the same purpose, making visitors aware of our valley. The Dunn Valley has no lake, so it's off the normal tourist track. We don't get coaches. The river marks the ancient boundary between the northwest with Lancashire on the eastern side and the northeast with Old Cumberland on the western side before Cumbria arrived in 1974. And it's about to happen again, isn't it, when we have the reorganisation of West Cumbria and East Cumbria. Um, we missed an opportunity uh, with our map by not putting the river into its context in the whole of Cumbria and by not highlighting Norman Nicholson's link to the side of the estuary in Millen. Now, Ordnance survey maps are wonderful things if you want lots of details, but in order to focus on the river, we blanked out all but that thin blue line down the middle. The Dudden is unique in the lakes as it runs from the central mountains directly to its estuary and into the sea. We marked off each of the crossing points from narrow bridges, the railway viaduct, the main A595 to private estate bridges, and included all the eight places where an adventurous soul can use stepping stones to cross from one side to the other and back again, which usually is needed when some of the party haven't followed the brave. Members were encouraged to let us know their favourite extracts from the sonnets, and these were then whittled down to give a spread from the north to the south and either side of the flow. Old photographs were collected and new ones taken to supplement the quotes. It all looked fairly flat until a small easel from a wedding visit inspired an uplifting idea that's made all the difference. You can see the pictures are just nicely stood up. 
That display stayed for the best part of the year on a pasting table in my attic until we finally got the message that the exhibition was to go ahead. The various pieces survived the torturous journey from Millham over Red Bank to Grasmere. Fitting it into the case was not straightforward as it was a flange that completed the climate control ceiling, which was knocking over the easels. Those easels were knocked over and then just with a single couple of fingers repositioned through a tiny gap in the flange. So, our case is workmanlike and does what it's, we set out to do. It puts poetry into the geographic context. Once it was sorted, we breathed a sigh of relief and ignored our case in order to look at all the fantastic textile work that the, and photos that the other contributors have created. We'd seen some of those sample pieces at our meetings, but now when you see all those amazing contributions together, it's just, wow. I think sitting down and writing three dozen sonnets with a rook um, feather quill is a bit of a piece of cake compared to what we've now got hanging on the wall. So thanks to um, all of the other contributors that have made such a thing, I, um, when, when somebody said you wanted to touch them, I wanted to check if they got a little red sticker on or whether they were still for sale. So I don't know what will happen to them at the end of the um, exhibition, but if anybody's prepared to swap one of their textile pieces for our map of the Duddon, uh, please get in touch. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. That, that was fantastic. I think, wow, it's, it's probably the best comment we could ever have about this exhibition. It's often how I feel when I'm, I'm viewing it. I visited it a few weeks ago and, and I wanted to say wow as well. Um, so, you know, another great perspective on the River Duddon. It, it really does alter our view of the landscape and the significance of this, of this wonderful river.